Just before we jump into this particular jazz history episode, which is the fourth of six focused on Miles Davis, I want to let you know in advance that several of the musical examples in this one have been blocked by the copyright holders. In more than 60 episodes, this has only happened a couple of times and never more than once in a single video. I'm telling you this because I know it'll be frustrating for viewers, and I want you to know that it is not typical of what you'll see in other videos on this channel and in this series. We've talked so far about a number of musical pairings, musicians who were drawn together by shared musical visions. The collaboration between Miles Davis and Gil Evans places them squarely in that category. It began in the late 1940s with the birth of the Cool Sessions, and it culminated in the 1950s with a series of groundbreaking recordings that established Miles as a dominant figure in the Third Stream movement at exactly the same time that he was leading the way in modal jazz. In 1957, Columbia producer George Avakian suggested the possibility of a large ensemble project, along the lines of Miles' Nonet in the 1940s or Gunther Schuller's Music for Brass, on which Miles had appeared as a soloist. Miles rejected the idea of returning to the nonette as that violated his aversion to reaching backwards. But he liked the idea of working with Gil Evans again, who he later described as his best friend, saying of his writing, I used to think you had to write lots of notes. Now I've learned enough about writing not to write. I give Gil an outline of what I want, and he finishes it. Nobody but Gil could think for me that way. Miles and Gill released three full albums between 1957 and 1960, and one that was partially completed a few years later. The first was Miles Ahead. A trio consisting of Wynton Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Art Taylor on drums was augmented by a 16-piece orchestra with a large brass section including French horns and tuba. Gill joined ten songs together into a suite that framed Miles as the only soloist, like a classical concerto. That format continued in the subsequent albums. The cover on the left was the original. Miles objected to the irrelevance of a white woman on a sailboat, and it was later replaced with the one on the right. Although they used a picture of Miles with a trumpet, he played flugelhorn on the album. That was a new element for Miles at the time, and the softer sound suited the music, but it's rare to hear Miles playing flugelhorn aside from the albums with Gil. By 1958, George Avakian had left Columbia, and his successor, Calvin Lampley, suggested George Gershwin's opera Porgy and Bess as the musical theme for the second collaboration between Miles and Gill. At the time, Miles' girlfriend, Frances Taylor, was appearing in an off-Broadway production of Porgy and Bess, and a controversial film version was nearing completion. It was also a trendy thing at the time to release jazz versions of popular music. Gill's brass backgrounds on his arrangement of Summertime had become almost synonymous with the tune. Thank <laughs> you. 
The third collaboration was Sketches of Spain, released in 1960. Francis Taylor, who by that time had married Miles, again played a role in the choice of music by exposing him to flamenco music. Gill said, We hadn't intended to make a Spanish album, but we began listening to folk music that was played in clubs in Spain, where you could hear the glasses crashing and the guitars playing along, not paying any attention to all the racket. So we learned a lot from that, and it ended up being a Spanish album. Miles said, The hardest thing for me was to play the parts on the trumpet where someone was supposed to be singing. I could only do it once or twice. If you do a song like that three or four times, you lose the feeling. After we finished, I didn't have nothing inside of me. I was drained of all emotion, and I didn't want to hear that music again. Now that seems to me to sum up Miles' philosophy on music. Give it your all, and then move on. fourth and final collaboration between Miles and Gil Evans, Quiet Nights, was never actually completed. The music was a bit of a mishmash between longer forms that were similar to what they'd done before and cuts that were influenced by Bossa Nova, which had been made popular by that time by Stan Getz with his recordings of Girl from Ipanema and Desafinado and others. Certainly by this time, Miles was headed in another direction. His producer, Tio Macero, released the album in 1963 over Miles' objections, including a track by his early 60s quintet with George Coleman, Victor Feldman, Ron Carter, and Frank Butler. The spat with Macero lasted several years. They didn't work together again until the 1966 album, Miles Smiles. The albums that Miles recorded with Gil Evans were criticized by some for veering too far from the jazz mainstream. When he was asked about that, Miles responded, It's music, and I like it. They are centerpiece examples of the third stream, and they represent a historic musical collaboration between composer and performer. 
For Miles, they also opened up his audience to many people who had not previously been interested in jazz, and they elevated his cultural impact beyond that of a jazz musician. 